That's right, mobile gamers. Today, I'm gonna share with you some awesome Wii U emulation on your Android gaming handheld or even your phone that is powerful enough to handle playing it on even eight gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM. So let's level up our gaming knowledge about Wii U emulation on Android in 24 because I can't wait to see what this has for us in store. So that is right, mobile gamers. We kind of, I'm gonna say kind of, have some Wii U emulation going on here in 2024. Well, at least the last three months of 2024, because yes, it's getting to that point of the end of the year already, I can't believe it. And we've lost our famous emulation Yuzu this year. <laughs> and some 3DS. Well, we actually still have 3DS emulation, but we lost Yuzu and seeing that Wii U emulation, which is still being developed to this day on a device that doesn't have an eShop anymore, on a device you can't go buy in stores anymore, you can't buy any games in stores anymore, brand new, from what I have found at least, unless you go to like a pawn shop or something. So yes, Wii U emulation on Android. I know it's been on Windows for a while, but on Android, wow. Like... I know we're gonna get so much more out of this. The performance of this is amazing. And right now I'm just playing some Wind Waker messing around. I'm not really just like playing, playing yet, but you can see the little bit of flaws where in the dark areas, it's extremely dark. And that's even the case on my Odin 2 Pro model. Now this is the Odin 2 mini base model with only eight gigabytes of RAM and it only utilizes about two gigs of ram on the most part and i can get a stable 30 fps playing at least in this area i haven't gone any further than this area yet but it is stable playing and i haven't had any crashes i played uh, about an hour of actual minecraft wii u edition as well didn't have a single crash didn't have a single slowdown and that was on my odin 2 pro model now, the only reason why I played it on there is just because I play on my pro model more than I play on my mini, and that's because of the size of it. I can't play on this thing for more than an hour without my hands getting a little bit tired and cramped, whereas my pro model is actually very ergonomically nice in the hands. That all aside, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of how this works and how to set it all up and stuff. I'm gonna save my game because I'm gonna play a little bit more of this later on, but yes, Wii U emulation is sort of here. Let's click back and show you the raw Wii U emulator itself. So this is basically the Wii U emulator. You know, it's a little bit hard to see on the screen here. All right, let's show this on the screen. So when you go into your folders of your device, I have three different folders on my devices now in my emulation folder called DLC, Update, and ROMs because there's gonna be updates that are gonna be helpful for this. So create a folder for all your updates of your games. So for your DLCs, you can find all of that stuff for your DLCs on that free shop or the Wii USB loader. Now the Wii S USB loader or even the application on the Wii U that actually extracts your games and dumps them will allow you to actually convert them properly. So they have to be converted properly that they can work on CMU. So they have three different folders inside of the actual main game folder. And those are the three folders that are very important. Now you don't have to, I'm gonna show you this right now in CMU. When we click on the settings and we add game paths, I have three different game paths here. One's for my games, one's for my, or my ROM, sorry. One is for my updates and one is for my DLCs. So you can see the folder name at the end. There's one of ROMs, DLCs, and updates at the bottom and that is my game paths you can add multiple different game paths in here because they're utilizing scope storage which is great and that'll give you the opportunity to actually set those three game paths for the updates uh, roms and for the actual dlcs so input settings is a little bit buggy right now i'm going to tell you that because i've inputted my wii u pro controller i've left the actual application before came back into it and then the wii u pro controller is gone so hopefully they fix that very soon because that's kind of annoying that you have to reset it back up graphic settings i have vsync triple buffering set to on now you could get away with double buffering but triple buffering does help a lot and it helps with rendering it in the background on the threads and with the snapdragon 8 gen 2 processor that is inside this device 
it is very very well performed and yes it doesn't go above two gigabytes graphics packs is another big thing so wind waker for example i have um a couple things set on so fps slowdown i have that turned on i'm going to turn this on just to see if that changes anything i don't think it does for this device because it's for computer resolution i have it 1920 by 1080 aspect or active preset shadow resolution now i'm going to change this to uh i'm going to see what 200 does i'm going to see if it can actually handle it enhancements contrasty i have it set to on but less sky bloom high contrasty uh we can go let's go games cube style let's see what that does and yeah i don't know if a lot of these actual enhancements are going to change things not every game is going to play either i'm going to let you know that as well and uh position i'm going to put uh top left or actually i'm going to go bottom left let's see if we can do that bottom left so you can actually see it and we're going to show i don't like to show the shader compiler that's kind of annoying but the controller profile and the ram and um, cpu usage we're going to see that as well so let's go back into legend of zelda wind waker i'm not going to show you the other games i did do a live where i was playing uh super mario world or super mario 3d world i played all the way up until the first castle yes there was some dark areas in the game and stuff just like this is but it played and the menu on this is i don't know if it's just me or if it's slow or not but it appeared to be slow but here's the game again and we're playing i don't see much of a difference after what i did with the shadowing and stuff like that it's not changing much but it is pretty cool to see how well hd wind waker plays now i'm gonna keep playing this i'm gonna do maybe an update about how far i made it into the game without it crashing or anything like that and it just really amazed me that a lot of these games actually did just play really well whereas games like donkey kong country uh returns did not play at all <laughs> so i got into the game and then the graphics were terrible and that's where graphics uh we need graphic driver support hopefully we'll get that very soon maybe that'll be the next thing they work on but driver support should help with all of the the shadowing all the rendering being so uh dark and everything as well but the gameplay itself as you can see in the bottom left hand corner 30 fps at only 25 cpu usage and up to two gigabytes of ram being used very very promising to say the least and it is very cool to see that they are trying to push this to android because android devices these days as of last year with the snapdragon 8 gen 2 processor the very powerful snapdragon 8 gen 2 processor that is you can buy a nice odin 2 for 299 dollars that is the best freaking processor and cheapest processor with 8000 milliamp battery that'll last you a long time you're getting an awesome device with performance and you got to think about things like this it's going to play wii u emulation and maybe we will get other emulators working on this in the future as well like ps3 maybe probably not ps3 is actually very demanding even on my windows computer but i get to play it i can play it on there it's just very demanding so that all aside what do you guys think do you think cmu is awesome on android i play it on my windows uh my z1 extreme my asus rogue ally and it works really well on there however seen it on android we might not even need uh, any of these Windows PCs anytime soon because if we can keep going like this, we will have emulators on every device. And will a Windows device be necessary or a Linux device or a Steam Deck? I don't know. I guess it will be necessary because we can't play Fallout 4 on this stuff yet, but maybe we'll get there sometime. And that's the thing. By the end of all this, all these handhelds, as you can see, it's really dark in here. Eventually android handhelds might be as powerful as a windows pc and be able to play any of these games down the road let's wait a couple more years before we get that point right so have a nice day guys i want to hear what you guys say about this it's freaking cool that we can play this and yeah it's running really great i haven't had any crashes yet other than the fact that some games just don't play whatsoever very well at all and i didn't even put donkey kong back on this one because i deleted it but even going back into another game like Super Mario 3D World was a blast. So if you want to go watch that live, I did a live the other day. If you want to watch me play Super Mario 3D World all the way until the first castle on my Odin 2 Pro, then go do that now. And of course, 
for those that say, oh, here we go. See, we have the issue with the controller not saving. That we can play 3D World and Wind Waker and all that stuff on other consoles, like Switch emulator, for example. That's not the point. The point is that we have active development. We have a lower CPU usage, which is really great. And we're getting lower RAM usage out of this as well. Whereas Switch emulator is using like six gigs of RAM. And these games were made for newer TVs and they were upgraded nicely to make them look really, really good. Like the screen right now. Have a nice day, guys. See you next time. Enjoy. That's the basics of how to get it going. You just need to make sure you convert your games and set up your input settings. As you see, my controller <laughs> one disabled again. So hopefully they fix that very soon. Thank you very much to the CMU developers and those that ported it to Android, whoever did that. Have a nice day, guys. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday day because it is Wednesday. Sometimes I film things on the same day and share them with you.